Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm going to be playing an old game I used to play when I was in first grade, second grade, third grade, back in the days when there were Apple IIs in the classroom in the early 1980s, called Gertrude's Secrets. Now Gertrude's Secrets, for those of you that played it, really needs no introduction, but for those of you who've never seen this game before, it's basically a puzzle solving slash uh, logic uh, puzzle game. And um, those of you that know me know that I uh, also teach logic and uh, spent years working for a company called Applia as a uh, content developer designing online homework assignments for logic and philosophy courses. And I don't think it's an overstatement to say that part of the reason I became a logician is because of this game and the early influence that it had in my life. So I'm going to be playing an emulated version of the game hosted by the Internet Archive, archive.org. I originally played this on the Apple II way back in the day. There's also a DOS version of the game, and I really like the Apple II version better because the DOS version is a little more monochromatic. It kind of has that uh, Scion and uh, Magenta CGA look to it. Um, the Apple II version is a little more colorful and a little smoother, I think. So I'm going to be playing the Apple II version. I also didn't really find a good version of Gertrude's Secrets, or uh, excuse me, a good video about Gertrude's Secrets on YouTube. Not the Apple II version, anyway. So I thought it would be fun to do a fairly complete walkthrough slash playthrough of the game. Talk through some of the things I like about the game from a design standpoint. Talk about some of the uh, uh, influences that it had in my life and getting me into thinking uh, formally and abstractly and getting me, getting me to think like a logician. And even uh, some things I'd have to say about it from an instructional design standpoint. Um, let me go ahead and start up the emulator and then I'll try to get it running in uh, full screen maximized mode so it's not a tiny little window on your screen. So let's start up the emulator. It'll take a second for the uh, archive.org Apple II emulator to start, and then once it starts up, I will adjust the volume if needed and uh, get the game running in full screen mode. Excuse me, this will just take a, a couple, you know, 20, 30 seconds here for the emulator to start up. Here we go. Got those nice Apple IIe sound effects. And we are in full screen mode. And this is Gertrude's Secrets. Gertrude is the goose, by the way, if you were, in case you were wondering her, who Gertrude is. So Gertrude is flying to her nest. There's also a little tutorial to the game. And um, of course, I've played this game when I was a kid, so I don't need to do the tutorial. But I'm going to go ahead and do the tutorial for completion's sake. So Gertrude's Secrets. This little green box is you. This little rectangular box in the middle of the screen. Right here, you can see my mouse cursor. Um, you know, uh, this is just a little bit of a history lesson, but this game was also partially designed by Warren Robinette, who also designed Adventure for the Atari 2600. And so this little uh, square avatar, whether a box or a, a square pixel, moving around a screen, going from room to room to room, is part of the design mechanic of this game and part of the design mechanic of... Uh, games like uh, Adventure on the Atari 2600, and it also it, it also extended to other um, uh, other games like back in the day on the Atari 2600. Things like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark would be an example. The same kind of thing, little character moving from room to room to room, and it's something that I keep coming back to in my mind. Like if I just had a blank canvas, you know, a, a game where you were an avatar on the screen going from room to room to room to room, what are the interesting things you could encounter and do, either from an educational standpoint or from an, edu edu uh, uh, an entertainment standpoint? Um, so to move, you use the keys I, J, K, and M, which is a little strange for me. I've been playing World of Warcraft so long using W, A, S, and D. I have to almost readjust myself to Apple II land here using I, J, K, and M. So I'm hitting J now, moving left. Put the blue flower in the box to open the door to Gertrude's secrets. Follow the arrows to see how. So, if memory serves, use the space bar to pick up an object, which I just did, and I'm going to move down and drop the flower in the box. And that actually, you can see on the left side of the screen, opens up a little shortcut to go into the main part of the game. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm actually going to do the little tutorial first. Okay. So now you're in a different room. You can almost see the need to explain what's going on. This is such an abstract game with such minimalist graphics. You need to explain, oh, you're in a different room now. Okay, we have rooms. And this room has blue walls. The door at the bottom of this room starts you on a path. It leads through many rooms. Follow the path. Okay, so let's uh, go right and we'll go down. 
This object is a bird, in case it doesn't look like a bird. I guess it looks like a bird. To pick it up, run into it and press the spacebar. You can carry it around with you. Put it down by pressing spacebar again. Okay, so let's pick up the bird. There we go. A nice pleasing sound effect to let you know that you picked it up. And uh, I guess we could put it down in the other room, but let's just put it down right where we got it there. Sometimes you need to move a tiny bit at a time. To do this, hold down the control key and press I, J, K, or M at the same time. Use the control key to put Herman's hat on his head. I guess that's Herman there, okay. Um, I remember having trouble with this because I, I, I couldn't quite master this when I was a kid. Um, I'm going to pick up the hat, hold down the control key. Oh, yes, now I can move a little bit at a time instead of these large, chunky movements. So let's just put Herman's hat on his head. I guess there's no way to center it. And we'll drop the hat. And there we go. So basically, this is just a little tutorial teaching you the interface. I'll explain the actual game when we get there. So you can turn the sound on and off by pressing Control and S at the same time. We're going to leave the sound on, even though this really annoying chirping bird is uh, making lots of noise right now. Make this noisy bird be quiet by pressing Control S. Make it sing again by pressing Control S again. Okay, let's do that. Control S. Okay, now the bird is silent. I'm going to hit Control S again, and we've got sound back. Press question mark to see what all the special keys are. Might as well do that right now. Okay, there's all the special keys. I to move up, J to move left, K to move right, M to move down. Hold down control to move slowly. Space bar to pick up or drop an object. They it would have been nice if they explained that at the very beginning when they first asked you to pick something up. Control S to turn off, uh, sound on or off, and escape to leave the program, which we're not going to do until we're done playing here. Press return to go back to the room we just left. There we go. And we are going to leave this room right now because this bird, <coughs> excuse me, is... Uh, noisy. If you have a joystick, go to the joystick room. If not, go up. So I don't have a joystick right now. I'm playing with a keyboard, but let's go to the joystick room just for completion's sake. If you did have a joystick, try it. You can move on top of this happy hexagon. Happy hexagon. Use the joystick button to pick it up and drop it again, which we're not going to do because we don't have a joystick. Although I wonder, yeah, I can still use the space bar even though I'm not using a joystick. So, okay. Let's go to the keyboard room, which is what I'm on. To do the puzzles in Gertrude's Secrets, you will need to put objects into boxes like this. Pick up the flower and put it in the box. Kazam! I love that. Kazam! The hidden door will open and you may enter the game. Okay. I keep accidentally trying to use W, A, S, and D, so I have to keep reminding myself to use the old Apple II controls. Pick up the flower. Drop it in the box. And then we have access to the game. You can see the little trap door opened right here. Okay. Let's uh, start the actual game now. So this is the actual start of Gertrude's Secrets. There are seven puzzle rooms. Each time you solve a puzzle, you will win a treasure. To play another puzzle, pick up Gertrude and drop her in any room. You know, I'm still fascinated by this notion of a treasure room. You know, um... Modern games do this in the form of achievements. Like when I play World of Warcraft, I get achievements for doing various things. But here you get a little visual treasure. And uh, the treasures are really cute. You'll see that each time you complete a puzzle, you get a different kind of treasure. And they uh, kind of pile up inside your storeroom. There's also some really interesting features in Gertrude's Secrets, like the ability to change the puzzle pieces. We'll look at that here in a minute. You also have a shape editor, so you can actually sh change the shape of any of the actual puzzle pieces. And if memory serves, you can actually change the shape of Gertrude herself. With all of that in mind, let's go ahead and go up to the actual... Uh, okay, so, so this is the treasure room. After you complete a puzzle, your treasures, quote-unquote, will collect here. Um, before we start the game, let's go to the storeroom. So these are the puzzle pieces that are used throughout the game. I'll talk about how they're used here in a minute. Um, you can see it's basically shapes and colors. We have orange, green, blue, and uh, purple. And uh, we've got diamonds. We've got, what are those, uh, hexagons. We've got squares, and we've got triangles. But if we go to the new piece room, there's also different shape families. So if I picked up, say, the rocket ship and dropped it in the other room, it'll actually change the... Uh, 
uh, the puzzle pieces to a variety of uh, space-themed, rocket ship-themed puzzle pieces. And I can do these funny little... Uh, Funny little, uh, I don't know exactly what they are. Funny little, you know, long-legged people. I could do these rocket ships. I could do hats, bugs, faces, and then, of course, the normal shapes. So we'll explore that here, but let's play with the normal pieces uh, to start with. And like I mentioned a minute ago, there's also a shape editor right here. One of the first games that actually has customization in it where you can customize your own game experience by, by building your own pieces. Um, we're not going to do that just yet, but we will explore this by the time I'm done. So let's play Gertrude's Secrets to Gertrude. Okay, so Gertrude is down here in the bottom left of the screen, just for completion's sake. I'm going to go down here. Right here where I'm at is Gertrude, the goose. To play, pick up Gertrude and drop her in a puzzle room. And we have different kinds of puzzles, three different versions of puzzles here. Array puzzles, train puzzles, and loop puzzles. Now, I'm actually going to start with loop puzzles for a very specific reason. Um, in the, the logic and critical thinking classes that I teach, one thing you have to teach is Venn diagrams. And what I didn't realize at the time is that what Gertrude Secrets calls loop puzzles are actually just Venn diagrams. Uh, where you're categorizing uh, these these puzzle pieces based on colors and shapes and putting them in the uh, appropriate Venn diagram regions. So that said, let's go ahead and pick up Gertrude. Actually, before we do that, um, let's go to the loop puzzles. I think there's a tutorial on how to play the game here. Yeah, so we're in a puzzle room now. But let's go to how to play. Oop, let's keep going. Here we go. So one loop puzzle, which is basically a one circle Venn diagram, even though it looks like a rectangle in the game. Drop Gertrude in the puzzle room, number three, to get pieces. Gertrude has a secret, hence the name Gertrude's Secrets. Guess her secret about which pieces belong in the box. Gertrude says, put a piece in the box. If it belongs, it will stay. If it does not, it will drop out. Okay. So basically what we need to do, we need to go grab Gertrude drop her in the room she's going to bring some puzzle pieces and we need to decide what kinds of things belong inside this square this rectangle it could be all green things it could be all uh, pieces of a certain shape all squares or triangles we don't know yet um and each what, what's clever about the game is it randomizes too every time you play the game you get a new randomization version and uh, so there's a lot of replay value because the puzzle actually changes from iteration to iteration so we'll play this a couple times just to get a, a feel for it, and then we'll move on to the two loop puzzles, which are basically two circle Venn diagrams. So we'll pick up Gertrude, go over to the one loop loop puzzle. We're gonna drop Gertrude, and you can see you'll see she flies away, and then she brings some puzzle pieces into the room. And it's our task right now to figure out which pieces go inside of this uh, rectangle. And we're given no information. We really have to explore this as we go. And one of the things I loved about this game as a kid is you really were empowered to play and to figure out the puzzle as you play. You weren't prompted. There was very little in the way of a tutorial. Um, you really have to kind of figure it out as you go. So I'm going to start by grabbing the first puzzle piece. It doesn't really matter which one I grab. I'm going to grab this... Uh, uh, blue diamond and we're gonna try dropping it in the square now if it belongs in the square it will stay if it doesn't belong in the square it will drop out and here it, it doesn't belong in the in the rectangle so we know that the rectangle does not have blue things or diamond things and so we can test this if I pick uh, say this uh, orange diamond I'm gonna guess that this orange diamond doesn't belong here either and it doesn't so let's see if we can find something that stays how about an orange square okay so an orange square doesn't belong either I'm gonna turn the volume down just a little bit that I'm not sure why I'm getting that uh, kind of uh, gnarly uh, staccato sound in the background. Okay, let's try a green triangle. Okay, a green triangle doesn't belong. How about 
an orange hexagon. Okay, so an orange hexagon belongs. Now, we know that the square can't just can't refer to orange things because otherwise the uh, orange diamond and the orange square would have stayed as well. So I'm going to guess that what belongs in this rectangle are everything that is a hexagon. So I'm going to grab the next hexagon. And sure enough, the green hexagon belongs. And my guess is that the moment we drop this blue hexagon in here, the puzzle will be over and we will have solved the puzzle because the square rectangle or the uh, green rectangle refers to everything that is a, a hexagon. And lo and behold, we solved the puzzle. And of course, Gertrude is going to bring us a treasure. And what she brought to me looks like a t-shirt with a picture of herself on it, which is super cute. Now, I think um, if we drop Gertrude and, or pick up Gertrude and drop her again, as if we're going to play the game again, again with a different randomization, the next time we play, the green rectangle on the screen here could refer to a color or could refer to a shape. It could conceivably be completely empty, um, but we don't know yet. But I think what happens uh, is that if we go back to the treasure room, yep, sure enough. We've got our first treasure collected in the treasure room, which is a t-shirt that with a picture of Gertrude on the t-shirt, which is super cute. So let's play this game again. And this time we need to figure out what uh, this green rectangle refers to. So it could be the same puzzle again, but it could be something completely different. Okay, and this time it looks like we've got something a little different. The uh, blue hexagon no longer belongs in the green rectangle. Let's try the blue square. And the blue square doesn't belong either. How about the blue triangle? Okay, the blue triangle doesn't belong. Um, let's try the green triangle. And again, when you first start, the thing that's a little frustrating about the game is that when you first start, there's no guidance. You really don't have anything to latch onto. You're looking for the first piece of information about what this green rectangle refers to. How about this green triangle? Okay, the green triangle belongs. Now, my guess is that the green rectangle on the screen here refers to not things that are triangle shaped, but things that are green, because otherwise the blue triangle, which fell out down below, would be in the in the rectangle as well. So let's um, let's test our theory. Um, if I'm right that this green rectangle refers to green puzzle pieces, then this lavender purple uh, maybe it's pink. I can't tell if that's lavender or pink um, uh, puzzle piece should drop out of the puzzle as well. Okay, so that worked as expected. So my guess is that everything green belongs inside this rectangle. And sure enough, the rectangle refers to green puzzle pieces. And this time Gertrude brought us a little diamond ring. Isn't that cute? This diamond ring doesn't shine for me anymore. Okay, so I'm going to pick Gertrude up. I'm actually going to go to the next... Uh, puzzle room, the slightly more complicated loop puzzles, or what are essentially Venn diagrams. And here we have two overlapping rectangles, which basically are squared versions of uh, two circle Venn diagrams in logic. And this is the, the most obvious connection to what one would do as a logic teacher. So let me uh, drop Gertrude in here. Before we start playing, let's let her drop the pieces. Um, I want to go back and just kind of look at our, our treasure room. It's always fun to see how many treasures you've collected. We've only collected two, but I want to demonstrate that the treasure room lets you collect treasures. So we've got two treasures in the treasure room, a diamond ring and our t-shirt with a picture of Gertrude. Now the treasures seem to be randomized, so you could get the same treasure again. Um, and you, if, you, if I replayed the game again, I wouldn't necessarily get the same treasures for doing the same puzzles. It's highly randomized. Okay. So puzzle room number four. Um, now I know how to play this. Basically we're looking for puzzle pieces to go in, in one of these three Venn diagram regions. Um, the Venn diagram regions could refer to a shape or to a color. So for example, I don't know how it's gonna play out yet, but the square on the left could refer to all purple things and the uh, square on the right could refer to all uh, triangular things. So in that region in the middle, uh, if that were the case, the purple triangle would go in the intersection of those two regions. Basic set their theory or basic uh, logic Venn diagrams. But let's go um, read the uh, instructions about how to play. 
you can see an example here. So in this example, we've got squares on the in the uh, rectangle on the left. We've got blue things in the 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 rectangle on the right, and of course a blue square would be would be what would go in the middle in the intersection of those two Venn diagram regions. But let's read the actual instructions. Two loop puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number four to get pieces. Gertrude has two secrets, one for each box. Guess her secret about which pieces belong in each box. Sometimes a piece belongs in both boxes. Gertrude says, put a piece in a box. If it belongs, it will stay. If not, it will fall out. What I like about this game as it relates to logic or set theory is that it gets you thinking in terms of objects with properties and the relationship between those properties. Some, uh, you know, like each of these, these puzzle pieces basically has two properties. It has a shape and it has a color and we can categorize them accordingly. So we're doing basic categorical logic here, all in the guise of a game. And uh, I remember being completely transfixed by this game in first grade. In fact, uh, this is a little too much information, but you know, I grew up with uh, uh, basically having computers at home. I had a Texas Instruments TI-99 4A computer. And when I was just a little bit older than that, my dad had a, an Epson QX10 computer. And uh, I remember when I was in first grade, I was the only person in the class who had ever, uh, maybe not the only person, but one of the only people in the class who had ever really used a computer at that point in the early 1980s. And I remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. Jordan at Orchard Elementary School in uh, Vacaville, California, used to let me kind of sit in the back of the room and teach people how to use the computer. So I was kind of the computer mentor. One student at a time would come over and I would basically teach them how to play this game on the computer um, one at a time. And I got to get out of doing some normal classwork for the sake of teaching other people how to play the computer. Okay, so this is a little more complicated because we don't know what each of these uh, Venn diagram regions refers to. So I'm gonna start by picking up a shape and dropping it in the first region and see if it stays. And it does not. But because it doesn't stay in the first region doesn't mean it doesn't belong in the second uh, region, the second Venn diagram loop. And it does belong there. So now we have to figure, we have a little bit of a pickle. We need to figure out whether the square on the right refers to uh, diamond shaped things or purple things. And the only way to do this is by trial and error. So let's, uh, let's try uh, seeing if the uh, puzzle refers to purple, or the, the right Venn diagram region refers to purple things. And it does not, otherwise that hexagon would have stayed. So it might refer to diamond shaped things. Okay, let's try putting the green diamond there. And the green diamond does stay there. Now let's try the orange diamond. Now here we have two possible options. Um, it could be that we drop the, the orange diamond here in the, in the right Venn diagram circle and it will stay, in which case nothing belongs probably in the intersection of these two uh, Venn diagram regions. But it could fall out, it could be that the left uh, Venn diagram region of the left, left left green rectangle refers to orange things, in which case that orange diamond would belong in the intersection of these two Venn diagram regions. And it stays there. So I'm guessing that the circle on the left also refers to a shape instead of a color, um, in which case there would be nothing in the intersection. So let's try that and see what happens here. We already tried the uh, hexagon shapes, so let's try triangles and see if triangles belong in the uh, uh, left-hand uh, Venn diagram region. And it does. So my guess is that all the triangles belong here in the left-hand Venn diagram region, and there will be nothing in the middle because there's nothing that's both a diamond and a triangle. So there is nothing in the intersection in this version. And we'll play this a couple times and see if we can get a couple variations just for completion's sake. And we've completed the puzzle. And what did Gertrude bring us this time? She brought us, it looks like a crown to me with a little cross on it because uh, it's the early 1980s and we still haven't quite weaned ourselves off our uh, Judeo-Christian background here. So it's a little uh, crown with a, with a cross. Okay. So let's pick her up. Let's play this one more time. We'll go check out the treasure room again here in a minute. And again, we have to kind of figure it out from scratch. So again, each of these two uh, large green rectangles, uh, what I'm calling Venn diagram regions, they could refer to a shape or to a color, and we don't know which. 
So I'm just going to start with the very first piece, this blue diamond. And it looks like the blue diamond does belong in the left-hand Venn diagram region. But we don't know whether the left-hand uh, region refers to all blue things or all diamond-shaped things. So let's try the diamonds. Okay, so it looks to me like the, the region on the left are all the diamond-shaped things. I'm going to try placing this green diamond here on the left, but it could belong in the intersection of these two Venn diagram regions if the um, region on the right refers to all green things, which it does not. So probably the region on the right also refers to a shape. Let's try squares. I don't know which it's going to be. It could be, it could be either of them. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's squares. It might be hexagons. Okay, so it looks like all the hexagons are going to go on the right. Oops, I need to use control to move a little more gradually here. There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm going to move that. It looks a little too, too close to the edge there. There we go. And I will replay this a couple times until I can show something that... Uh, uh, belongs in the intersection of the two Venn diagram regions. We didn't get the, we got basically got a, a, another variation of the game where each of the two regions refers to a shape. So obviously there's going to be nothing in the intersection because there's nothing that is both shapes at once. But that's okay. We're having fun and we're racking up treasures as one tends to do in Gertrude's Secrets. Okay, so this is really cute. This looks like a little portable television with an antenna on it uh, to me. So maybe it's a radio, but I think it's a television with uh, a little antenna. Okay, so let's pick up Gertrude, drop her again. I will replay this version until we get something in the middle of the Venn diagram region. Just to show the show the point. Okay, so it looks like the uh, purple or pink or lavender uh, diamond does not belong in that first region. Let's see if it belongs over here on the right. And it does. So all we know right now is that the right Venn diagram region, that right green rectangle, refers either to all the purple things or it refers to all the diamond shaped things. Let's try diamonds. Okay, so that fell out. That doesn't mean it doesn't belong in the diagram somewhere. It could belong in the intersection. But let's try uh, all the purple things. Let's see if purple things belong in the uh, right Venn diagram region. Okay, so I think we got the same thing again where, actually it looks like on, in this case, it might the, the two Venn diagram circles might refer to colors because all of the purple objects ended up on the right side of the uh, Venn diagram with nothing in the middle. So let's see um, uh, what color belongs in the left-hand Venn diagram circle. Okay. Looks like the, this is a prediction, I haven't done it yet, but it looks like all the uh, purple things belong in the right Venn diagram circle and all the green things are going to be along in the left hand Venn diagram circle. And of course, again, there's going to be nothing in the middle here because there's nothing that's both purple and green in this, in this game. So, again, I will replay it here until we get something, uh, a puzzle where there's an intersection in the middle. And here we have a different color TV, so we've got TV a couple times. The treasure room is going to fill up quickly. Okay, let's play this again. I really want to get a version of the game where we have an intersection uh, of these two uh, uh, Venn diagram circles. Okay, so we have a blue diamond in the left. So the left uh, Venn diagram region could refer to all blue things or all diamond shaped things. Let's see if it refers to all blue things. So far, so good. Okay, we have all blue things. I think we're getting, frustratingly, I think I'm getting version after version where there is no uh, no intersection. I, I will continue playing until we get one. So it looks to me like we have the two Venn diagram regions referring to colors again and again here. Uh, all blue and all green. 
Boy, I'm already getting faster at this. It's been a long time since I've done this. Hooray for you. You've done six puzzles. Now you are a secret master. Okay, press return to go back to Gertrude's secrets. Like a little intermediate achievement there. And what's my treasure this time? It looks like a roller skate to me. It looks like a little boot with wheels. So I think that's a roller skate. Okay. I'm getting a little frustrated already because I really want to show that there actually is a version of the game where you have an intersection here. So the left-hand version uh, could be blue things or diamond-shaped things. Don't know which. Ooh, okay. So it looks like on the left we've got diamond-shaped things. Let's test our theory there. We don't know because these pieces that are falling out might actually refer to um, something that belongs in the intersection. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so notice what happened. We have two diamonds on the left side of the, in the left-hand region, um, but the orange one, uh, the orange diamond fell out. So that says to me that the orange diamond actually belongs in the intersection here, which means that the circle on the right, sorry, now I keep saying circle because I'm used to thinking about Venn diagrams and logic, but the Venn diagram region on the right, the rectangle on the right, is supposed to refer to all orange things. And let's test that by placing this orange square here in that region. And that stays. And I suspect that when I drop this triangle right here, I will complete the puzzle and I'll explain it momentarily. And what did Gertrude bring us? She brought us uh, oh, a little flower, like a rose or a tulip. I think it's a tulip, not a rose. Um, so let me explain here. So we have two Venn diagram regions on the left. This left green rectangle uh, refers to diamond shaped things. And you can see that all three of the uh, diamonds are in that larger left hand rectangle. But the orange diamond has to go in the intersection of these two regions because the region on the right, this, gr this uh, right hand uh, green, sh green uh, rectangle, refers to all orange objects. And what belongs in the intersection, in other words, what's both a diamond and orange, well, the orange diamond belongs right here in the intersection of these two Venn diagram regions. So even though Gertrude Secrets calls this, uh, uh, this type of puzzle a, a loop puzzle, essentially, because there are two overlapping square loops here, they're essentially Venn diagrams, very much like what you would get in categorical logic in a logic class or a critical thinking class in college. So um, yeah, I didn't know at the time that I was being taught logic as I was playing this game that I used to love because it, it was so simple and minimalist and colorful. And uh, I don't know if it's interesting now. I think it's interesting from a design standpoint, but I found this fascinating when I was in first grade. Okay, so let's pick Gertrude up and let's go play a different kind of puzzle now. Let's do array puzzles. Okay, puzzle room number one. Um, let's drop Gertrude in here, get our puzzle pieces, and then we'll go down and look at how to play. Notice that the room's a different color, so this is a very colorful game. You can see why I like the Apple II version a little more than the more monochromatic uh, DOS version. Okay, let's go read how to play, even though I know how to play. I love that it gives you a visual example, okay, so you can kind of see, uh, even, I think even from looking at this example, you can see what's going on here. The um, rows refer to colors, so the top row from left to right is all orange objects, the second row uh, is uh, green objects, and the last row is, is blue objects. And look, going down the columns now, the first column, the left-hand column, refers to all hexagons. The uh, second-hand column is all triangles, and the third-hand column is all squares, um, which we're going to get an explanation on here in a moment. So a three-by-three three array puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number one to get pieces. Put one piece in each box to complete Gertrude's pattern. The pattern can be all one shape or all one color in any row or column. I love that it's teaching the concept of a row or column too. Kind of learning uh, proto uh, spreadsheet Excel skills here too at the same time. You will know when you are right when a piece will stay. Okay. So let's... Uh, and notice that this is uh, the puzzle starts out partially completed to give you something of a starting point, which is really handy. I actually kind of wish the loop puzzles would do that as well. 
So I can gather from this two pieces of information. It looks to me like the second row, in fact, I'll uh, move my cursor around, the second row right here, I'm kind of moving from left to right within the row, this row refers to all purple objects. So my guess is that the purple hexagon will go right where my cursor is now. Uh, it looks to me, if the rows refer to colors, that the green objects are going to go correspondingly in the bottom row and the blue objects are going to go in the top row. And I can also gather in the columns now, the vertical columns, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize the columns here by going up and down. This column looks like it's going to contain square objects. So probably the blue square is going to go here in the top left and the um, uh, blue triangle will go in the uh, adjacent uh, region and the uh, blue hexagon will go here where my cursor is at now. I'm going to get it wrong right off the bat just to kind of show what happens when you get it wrong. So this is a, a wrong move. I'm going to drop this, the triangle here. Really the triangle belongs in this bottom row, but I'm going to drop it here and it will show that the triangle drops out. Like that's not where that triangle goes. So let's get the triangle right. That's going to go right here. There we go. And even though we, we don't really have a, a basis here for concluding this except for a process of elimination, it looks like that the green hexagon is going to go right here because green objects belong in the bottom row and that's the only shape left. So lo and behold, the green hexagon goes right there. Let's finish the second row. And lo and behold, the purple hexagon belongs in that region. In fact, let's uh, finish the hexagons. We said that the right-hand column, column number three, was going to be all hexagons, which it is. And we also said that the top row was going to be the blue objects, so the blue triangle will go right here. And that leaves the blue square to complete the square column right here. And we've completed the puzzle. And what did Gertrude bring us? It looks like another t-shirt with her picture on it because Gertrude is a Gertrude is a vain goose. She likes herself. She's a very pretty goose, I think. I'm going to do each puzzle at least twice before we move on to the more complicated version. So let's do this puzzle one more time. I want to do a fairly complete playthrough of this game, which I haven't done probably since I was in third grade. I've played this a little bit just to show other folks. Um, and, you know, I, I do actually refer back to this game quite a bit in my own instructional design work because this game is so simple and beautiful and minimalist, a minimum of instruction, maximum of benefit. It's fun to play. You get treasures. You have an incentive to keep playing again. And any teacher worth his or her salt, I think, knows that um, you have to give students an incentive to try again. So if you make a mistake, you want to keep playing at it. And... Uh, we like collecting treasures. We like achievements. We, we, we like rewards. As you move into education, you get diplomas and degrees and uh, awards in your professional field. And, you know, we like collecting those things. We each kind of have our own personal or professional treasure room anyway. And uh, this game really does give uh, uh, the user the, in excuse me, the incentive to keep playing and keep trying again. Okay, so it looks like we know that the column on the right are all the blue objects. So I'm going to drop the blue hexagon here. And so it looks to me that the first row now um, refers to hexagons. And so I'm going to drop the purple hexagon here. And we're going to drop the blue hexagon, uh, excuse me, the orange hexagon. Oop, I didn't grab the hexagon. That's one problem with this game. It's very easy to accidentally grab the wrong object. There we go. Grab the orange hexagon. And the orange diamond should belong in the uh, second column, the bottom row. And that leaves the purple diamond to go right here. And we're done. You know, the human mind is naturally pretty good at categorization. I sort of think of the array puzzles as the easiest kind of puzzle because our minds really make these associations pretty quickly. You know, the columns going a certain way or the shapes going the other way, uh, uh, colors going one way, shapes going the other way, columns and rows. And we make those categorizations pretty easily. And what do we get? Another television. There are things besides televisions and T-shirts as, as trophies. But uh, we'll look at the trophy room when we finish the uh, array puzzles. Okay, let's do the more complicated version. 
four by four now. Okay, so let's get our puzzle pieces. We're gonna have more puzzle pieces this time. So this is the most puzzle pieces we've had so far. And let's go read how to play, even though this should be a little obvious at this point. Four by four array puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number two to get pieces. Put one piece in each box to complete Gertrude's pattern. The pattern can be all one shape or all one color in any row or column. You will, you will know when you are right. You will know you're right when a piece will stay. Okay. <clears throat> and I love that the pre-populated pieces really tell us everything we needed to know. It looks to me like the column on the right, this vertical column right, uh, right here, are going to be all blue objects. So it says to me that the columns refer to colors. Green objects are going to go right here. And uh, purple objects are going to go into column number two and orange objects are going to go in column number one. And then it looks like the rows are going to refer to different uh, uh, types of shapes. So it looks like squares are going to belong in row number one, and it looks to me like uh, hexagons are going to belong in row number two, diamonds here in row number three, kind of just moving back and forth so you can indicate, so you can follow along with what I'm referring to, and pretty clearly triangles are going to belong in the, the bottom row. So let's get started. So if I'm right, what did I grab? I grabbed a hexagon. If I'm right that uh, the second row is going to refer to hexagons and um, the first column on the left are going to be orange objects, this orange hexagon should go right here. And it does. So let's finish the hexagons. We said that the first row is going to be blue objects. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> no, we didn't say that. We said that the fourth column was going to be blue objects. Hello. And hexagons were going to be in the second row. So there we go. Almost made a mistake there. I'm trying to talk while doing this and not really thinking it through. And it looks like triangles are going to be in the third row. So this blue triangle is going to go in the third row, fourth column, right there. Okay. I'm going to grab this square just because it's convenient. And uh, we said that the first column was orange objects and the first row was squares. So orange square right there. Might as well finish the uh, orange column. There we go. You can see we have actually two overlapping pieces right here. I'm just going to get rid of that and grab one of them. So we have a green triangle, or excuse me, green square, hello, which is going to go right here. Now let's grab that green triangle, which is going to go in the very bottom uh, row, third column. So again, I think of these array puzzles as probably the easiest puzzles in the game. They're the, the easiest to get a handle on. Our, our minds naturally create this kind of categorization. And we're good, especially nowadays where everyone and their mother has seen Excel spreadsheets and uh, putting things into rows and columns is second nature. But you have to kind of put yourself back in the early 1980s. You know, there were, you know, if you wanted a table, you had to draw it on a piece of paper or print it on a piece of paper. We did, you couldn't just jump into it a spreadsheet. Although there were spreadsheets like VisiCalc, I think, was a thing at the time. No one in first grade had ever seen a spreadsheet before. So the whole idea of categorizing things by columns and tables, or excuse me, columns and rows, was relatively new at the time, and no one had seen anything like that before, at least not on a computer screen. So, yeah, even though this seems so obvious now, at the time it was genuinely innovative and novel, and it's, it's hard to put yourself back in the mindset of the early 1980s where no one had seen anything like this before. Okay, we're just going to finish this one up. I'll do one more version of it because I said I was going to do each puzzle twice. And there we go. We've completed a 4x4 four four array puzzle. And we probably got another television set. We're going to have a room full of television sets in our treasure room. Okay. Pick Gertrude up. Drop her. And she'll bring more puzzle pieces. And what do we have here? Okay. To me, it looks like what we have here, we have a different randomization version, looks to me like the... Uh, Columns actually refer to shapes this time. So we have 
Uh, the column on the right refers to triangles. Looks to me like the column on the left, uh, column number three is going to refer to hexagons. Column number two is going to refer to squares, and column number one is going. Oop! I just grabbed one accidentally. Is going to refer to um, uh, diamond-shaped things. Okay, so my guess is that the blue square is going to go right here. So far, so good. We're off to the races. You know, one thing I like about the game is that it really is low stakes. If you make a, mis a mistake, it's not like you die. It's not like you lose points. The piece just kind of gently slides out of the way, and you know you made a mistake, but you aren't punished for it, and you get to keep playing until you complete the puzzle. The good side of that is that it's a, it's a nice, friendly game. It's not a pun it's not a punishment-heavy game. The downside is you really could, in theory, complete each puzzle merely by trial and error without really understanding the takeaway. But I think at a certain point you realize that it's faster just to learn the pattern than to try to game the system and complete the puzzle without actually learning what you're doing. So it's genuinely effective from a pedagogical standpoint. Okay, we said that column number one was going to be diamond-shaped things, and clearly row number uh, three is going to be purple things, so the purple diamond is going to go right there. We'll just go ahead and complete the purple row, like so. You know, I, I don't remember this taking significantly less, uh, significantly more time when I was in first grade. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, the, the, the teaching points are really straightforward, and once you get a handle on it, the, your uh, progress kind of speeds up. Um, I like that each puzzle is so completely on point. It's not trying to teach you ten things at once. It's trying to teach you a simple pattern at once, and it just focuses on one thing at a time. And sometimes educational technology or educational games get too complicated. They try to teach you more than one thing at once. And I find uh, educational games to be most on point when they try to teach you one learning point at a time and make each little game or each mini game focused on that one takeaway. And Gertrude's Secrets just does that so well. So to me, it's still really the, the model of what uh, an educational game should be, no matter how simple this is. And it's just colorful and beautiful. I could look at this all day, really. Okay, we'll see which piece we grab here. There. Looks like we grabbed a square, so put the green square right here in the intersection of the green row and the square column. And we'll drop the triangle and complete our little uh, Excel spreadsheet here, so to speak. There we go. And what did we get this time? Oh, it looks like we got a little pickup truck. Do you see it uh, down here? Check it out. It's like a little pickup truck with two with with little wheels. Okay, like a little toy truck. All right, let's um, try the last kind of puzzle. Oops, wrong way. Sorry, I'm still kind of getting used to using these old-fashioned Apple II controls. Let's do train puzzles. So let's drop Gertrude, then we'll go read how to play. can see an example here. You know, you can kind of figure this out from the example. If you follow the train, start in the top left, we have a, uh, or a purple hexagon. To the right, we have a purple triangle. And below, we have a purple square. So every at every iteration, every time you follow one of these lines, you basically have one difference. The difference can be a color or it can be a shape difference, but only one difference at a time. And the, the instructions are going to, going to explain that. One difference train puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number five to get pieces. This puzzle is a train of boxes connected by single lines. Put one piece in each box. Each, each piece must be a different shape or a different color from the piece in the box before it. Gertrude says, one line, one difference. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. So one line, one difference. We're given a uh, purple diamond. So that means in the next box where my cursor is now, we could have uh, something purple, uh, but, a, but a different uh, shape, or we could have the same shape, but a different color. And I'm gonna opt for something the same color, but a different shape, right here. So one difference. We have the same color, but a different shape. So that piece should be just fine right there. Now we've got a choice. 
we can um, have uh, something that's the same color, so another purple object, or um, the same shape but a different color. So I'm going to do the same shape but a different color now, just to mix it up. So remember, only one difference at a time, because we're, we have single lines connecting these boxes. So we have one difference. The difference is the difference of color, but the same shape. And let's see. So now we can do a, another uh, single difference. Something the same color, but a different shape. Or we could do a same shape, but a different color. Either way. I'm making somewhat arbitrary choices here. I'm going to get it wrong intentionally here for a moment, just to kind of illustrate the difference. So here we have two differences. This is not only uh, a different color, but it's also a different shape. And this, this piece does not belong in this box, so it should go sliding out of the box when we let go of it. And lo and behold, that piece doesn't belong there. Um, what would belong? Something that's the same um, shape but a different color, or the same color but a different shape. Let's try this purple square. Actually, I'm going to hold down Control and move a little more uh, fine-grainedly there. And that belongs there, OK. And now we can have something that's the same color but a different shape again, or a uh, uh, same shape but a different color. So I'm going to do the same shape but a different color. This orange square should work. And lo and behold, we completed the puzzle. <clears throat> what did we get? Another little truck. Hooray for you. You've now done six puzzles, six more puzzles now. Now you are a secret master. OK. Let's uh, do this puzzle one more time. We'll drop Gertrude and she'll bring some pieces. We are given a green triangle. <clears throat> so again, we can have the same, uh, same color but a different shape or a uh, different color, same shape. So here we have a same color, different shape. And same color, different shape. Now we can do something. There's nothing else the same color, so we have to do the same shape in a different color. So I used up all my green pieces. And we could do the same shape in a different color. Oop, not that one. I meant to grab the square. There we go. And now let's do something a little different. Let's do the same color but a different shape. So you can see we're, we have a couple of options. There's, this isn't totally deterministic. There's more than one correct way to complete each puzzle. And what did we get? Check this out. This is going to be a little uh, recognizable to me, but not recognizable to people who are younger. This is a little transistor radio. We'll look we'll at it more carefully in the, in the treasure room. But it's a little square box, and it's got a little display, and it's got a little antenna on it that you can't really see because it's overlapping with the, the green rectangle above it. But it's a little transistor radio. OK. Let's go. Um, OK, puzzle room number six. OK, this is a little more complicated. You can see that these, these green rectangles are connected by double lines now. So let's go read how to play. Two difference train puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number six to get pieces. This puzzle is a train of boxes connected by double lines. Put one piece in each box. Each piece must be a different shape and a different color from the one in the box before it. So two lines, two differences. So in each adjacent box, in fact, you can see the example here, they have to be not only the same, uh, uh, not just a different color, but the same shape, but they have to be a different color and a different shape. So the com a complete opposite uh, of, of the shape that's the, that, that precedes it. So both a different color and a different shape. But again, there's more than one correct way to complete each puzzle. So OK, if we have a purple diamond, we have to have something that's not purple and not, not a diamond. So let's try an orange square. And that should work because it's not the same color and it's not the same shape. Now, I'm going to get it wrong on purpose here. So we need something that's not orange and not a square, but this piece doesn't meet the criteria because it's the same color. So this piece should drop out of the square when I drop it. And it does. So we need something that is neither orange nor square. 
how about a purple hexagon? It's neither orange nor square. Notice that you're, uh, I almost can't help it because I used to teach logic, but um, we're learning sort of these basic logical connectives, neither, nor, either, or, both, and, and these are basic propositional logic connectives, and I almost can't help but use them as I'm describing what needs to be done here. So I'm, you know, teaching and learning logic and playing this game. So we need something that is neither purple nor a hexagon. So I'm going to try a blue square. And the blue square works. So now I need something that is neither blue nor square. And how about the orange diamond that is neither blue nor square? And that worked. Now we need something that is neither orange nor a diamond. And how about the uh, blue hexagon that is neither orange nor a diamond? And that should complete the puzzle. And it does. What did we get? Another little transistor radio. You can see the antenna a little better there. A little purple transistor radio. Okay. I know. I love that the the front of it, the little uh, the bottom part of the uh, the face of the, the little transistor radio, looks like a little grid, like a little sp speaker, just like transistor radios. I know I'm dating myself now. Who has a transistor radio anymore? But that's uh, clearly what it is. Okay. Okay. Next puzzle. This is a little more complicated because we have both single lines and double lines, so we'll really have to pay attention to what we're doing here. Let's get our pieces, then we'll go up and read the uh, instructions how to play. Should be obvious from the previous two puzzles. Okay, mixed difference train puzzle. I love they have to give everything a name. It's a mixed difference train puzzle. Drop Gertrude in puzzle room number seven to get pieces. In this puzzle, some boxes are connected by single lines and some are connected by double lines. Put one piece in each box. Gertrude says, one line, one difference, two lines, two differences. I got it. Okay, so we're given uh, an orange, uh, excuse me, a purple triangle, and we have a single line to the next box. So that says to me that we need either something that is a triangle but a different color, or something a different color, uh, same color but a different shape. So let's do a purple square. That's one difference. Same color, different shape. And that works. And now notice the next uh, box is connected by a double line right here. So that says we're going to need uh, two difference, something that's neither purple nor a square. So how about a green triangle? That should work. Okay, and it did. Now we have a single line to the next box, so we need something that is uh, one difference away. Same color, different shape, or uh, same shape, different color. Uh, so I'm just going to grab a green square. I'm oh, sorry, a green diamond. I accidentally grabbed the wrong one. And that works. We have a single line to the next box, so that says we're going to need something that's green but a different shape, or the same shape and a different color. Let's do... How about uh, an orange diamond? Same shape, different color. That works. Then we have a double line, so the next box has to have two differences. So it can't be orange and it can't be a diamond. So how about a blue triangle? That's neither orange nor a diamond. We, then we have two lines to the next box. So something that's neither uh, orange nor triangle. How about this green square? That'll work. I love that uh, even in a simple puzzle like this that's not completely deterministic, um, stu uh, the, the user or the students get some choice of the matter. They get to choose which puzzle piece fulfills the criteria that would uh, you know, meet the, the rules of the game. Very cleverly designed. Then we have a single line to the next box, so we need something that is either uh, square but not green, or green but not a square. So let's grab this uh, blue square, that'll work. Same shape, different color. And then a double line to the next box, so something that is neither blue nor a square. How about this uh, purple diamond? And that should complete the puzzle.
What did we get? Another roller skate. So we've got plenty of roller skates in our uh, treasure room. It'll give us plenty of raw material to play with the shape editor here in a little bit. Okay, I said I'm going to do each puzzle twice, so let's do this one once more time. One more time. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we are given an orange triangle, and the next box is connected by a single line, so we have to have something that's the sh same shape but a different color, or the same color but a different shape. So let's do this purple... Uh, oop, not that one. Excuse me. Oop, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to have to zoom in here. There we go. Let's do something that's the same shape but a different color, like so. Okay, then we have a double line, so we need something that is neither a triangle nor purple. So how about this green square? That should do the trick. Then we have a single line, so one line, one difference. So we need something that's the same shape or the same color, but not both. So let's do this green hexagon, just for kicks. Okay, then we have a uh, single line, so we need one difference. Let's do a uh, green triangle. Didn't really matter, could have chosen a couple things. Then we have a double line, so something that is neither green nor a triangle. How about this, uh, just because my cursor's right here, how about this orange square? Then a double line, so something that is neither orange nor a square. Oh, I said neither orange nor a square, and yet I grabbed a purple square. I was so distracted by the... Uh, background noise. I don't know why the emulator is causing that uh, clicking sound. Um, I don't remember that happening in the original version of the game, so I suspect it's a problem with the emulator. In fact, I noticed the emulator is running a little more slowly as I'm playing, so I wonder if there's some sort of runaway memory leak or something with the uh, emulated version of the game. If it gets too bad, we'll just end the stream and you'll get the idea, but I really want to look at the uh, shape editor and the, the different types of puzzle pieces that there are. Okay, so we have a single line um, connecting this uh, triangle to the next box, so we need something that it, or the uh, diamond to the next box, so we need something that's green but not a diamond or diamond but not green. So we'll grab this orange diamond here. In fact, you can see the emulator is going slower and slower and slower. It's taking a little longer for the clicks to, to go through. Hopefully it gets better. If it gets worse, I'll have to end the stream, unfortunately. And then the last box, we need something that is neither uh, orange nor a diamond. So I'm going to grab this purple... In fact, I'll use this purple square that I accidentally grabbed before. Okay. I really don't know why the emulator is struggling. That should complete the puzzle. But you can see the emulator struggling here. It's going slower. What did Gertrude bring? A little truck. Okay, let's grab Gertrude and go back to the main. So that the main part of the game. So that is every puzzle piece, every type of puzzle in in Gertrude's Secrets. Um, I do want to look at the shape editor and look at the different types of uh, puzzle pieces that there are. But um, I might have to end this and restart the game, um, restart the emulator. So we'll we'll see here. See if dropping Gertrude in the main room fixes the problem. Okay, that didn't fix it. I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go down and look at the treasure room, see all the treasures we've collected. 
So lots of treasures so far. I was hoping to fill up the treasure room. You can see there's plenty of plenty more room here. We got a couple televisions. We have what, three televisions. We have two t-shirts. We've got uh, a tulip. We've got a crown with a cross on it. We have three trucks, uh, a couple roller skates, and a couple transistor radios, and a diamond ring. That said, what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to exit out of full screen mode here. I am going to restart the emulator. And then I want to jump in and look at the shape editor and the different shape options. And that'll probably be enough to give you a really good overview of what Gertrude's Secrets is. It'll take just a minute for the emulator to uh, relaunch here. There we go. Hopefully this will run more smoothly now again. At some point, I might do another stream with the DOS version just to show the difference. Uh, but the Apple II version really is a, a nicer to look at game than the uh, the uh, DOS version. Boy, this, even the new version of the emulator is going more slowly. Oh yeah, this is terrible. I think what I need to do is probably close my whole browser down. Restart the browser, which hopefully should clear any weird memory issues. Let's see, Gertrude's Secrets. There we go. Let's see if I can get a get this running a little more smoothly. Probably just needed to close down the browser. It might have been a problem problem memory leak for the browser. Fingers crossed this will go a little more smoothly. There we go. Now we're back at full speed again. We're going to skip the tutorial this time so we can get to looking at the uh, uh, shape emulator or shape editor and the different puzzle pieces. So we're going to take the shortcut here. Let's grab the flower, put it in the box. It's kind of weird that there's a blue flower. There aren't many blue flowers in nature. Okay, so we've started the game over, so our, tre our treasure room is empty. But what I want to show now are the different uh, p uh, options for the different uh, puzzle pieces. So I said at the beginning that if you grab um, one of these uh, uh, sort of different uh, icons for different shape families and you drop it in the puzzle piece room in the storeroom, the pieces will all change. So now I can replay the game. Instead of using colors and shapes, I've got colors and different uh, characters, you know, these fanciful, uh, you know, pixel art characters. Um, I'm not even sure what they're supposed to be. Here's the thing with long legs. That this looks like an alien. This looks like a skeleton to me. And uh, this looks kind of almost like E.T. <laughs> a little bit. This came out after E.T., so it wouldn't surprise me if that's a little homage to E.T. There's also different uh, rocket ships. So let's, uh, I think they're all rocket ships. Oh, different kinds of spaceships. In fact, to me, the, a couple of them look like they're like Space Invaders knockoffs. Like this one here looks like something that could have been out of Space Invaders. This looks like some sort of, not a helicopter, but it's a, uh, I can't tell what it is. A rocket ship and maybe a TIE fighter from Star Wars. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll call it a TIE fighter. Okay. Let's grab the hats. Then I might do one of the puzzles with these different shapes so you can see uh, you know, what the, what the end result is. 
different kinds of hats. We got a top hat and a baseball hat and a cowboy hat and I don't know what the bottom one is, like a beanie hat maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess that's a beanie at the bottom. Different kinds of bugs. So even though it's just cosmetic, you know, you're just changing the shape of the of the puzzle pieces, you know, there's a lot of replay value here. Oh, different kinds of animals, not just bugs. So we've got bugs, we've got, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that a horse or a sheep? A chicken, and uh, to me it looks like a turtle at the bottom. We'll call it a turtle. Boy, it's been a long time since I played with the, uh, the different puzzle pieces in Gertrude's Secrets. These are probably different uh, shapes or uh, different kinds of faces with different emotions, maybe. Oh, basically different uh, puzzle, same shape-based puzzle pieces, but with little faces. That's cute. Okay. And let's see what we've got here. Oh, this is just the original, just the shapes. Which I think I'll use that as the basis for playing with a shape editor. So let's drop that in the room, and we're back to our original kinds of, uh, of puzzle piece shapes. Let's um, let's play with the shape editor. So if I grab any of the shapes, and I think uh, any of these puzzle pieces, but I think you can also grab the treasures, and I think you can grab Gertrude herself. We might test that here in a minute. Let's grab one of these. Okay, so we're in the shape edit room. Carry a shape into the big box. Use spacebar or joystick or your joystick button to draw or erase. When you're done, move out of the box. Okay. Let's see what we do. So we come in here, and now we can edit this shape. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a little face on this diamond. I'm hitting spacebar to erase from the shape. Let's see here, what can I do? Uh, Actually, I think I'm going to fill that in. Let's just make a little smile here. There we go. So now that looks like a diamond with a smile to me. And if I leave that, I can take this shape, and you'll see that all of the diamonds now have that little face that I drew. And I'm going to do the same thing in all the others. And you can get as crazy as you want here. I think that's what's fun is it really you really get a lot of creativity. So if I want to... Um, I don't know, what if what if I make a little starburst here? Something like uh, like that. And now if I carry that outside, all of the hexagons have that little starburst I just drew. And I don't know what we could do with the square. I think with this what I'm gonna do with the square. Let's just make some little geometric pattern here. How about that? We'll kind of... Uh... No, we'll do this. Doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of showing how it works. But uh... yeah, we'll just make a little grid pattern. How about that? Almost looks like snowflakes falling or something to that effect. I remember just spending hours and hours in my first grade classroom fiddle farting around with the shape editor and playing the same puzzles with different versions of the same, uh, uh, different versions of the shape pieces, collecting as many treasures as I could. And, uh, boy, you really can learn so much about educational psychology from this game both about rewarding success, not punishing failure, giving people an incentive to try again, giving some creative ownership over the experience, you know, through some some kind of customizability or open-endedness. And here's our little uh, edited square. Check that out. That's a lot more fun, isn't it? In fact, I think I'll play a version of the game using these uh, new shapes here momentarily. Let's edit the triangle. You know, I think what I'll do with this one, I think I'll make this some sort of, uh, I don't know, little bow tie kind of thing. Yeah, something like this. 
and you can get as creative as you want here, but we're just kind of taking the low-hanging fruit for the sake of the, the live stream. Let's see. Do 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 do. Accidentally. Yep. There we go. There we go. Now we got our little bow tie shape, for lack of a better word. Okay, so these are our puzzle pieces now. And now, if I go pick up Gertrude and drop her in one of the puzzle rooms, we'll, I think we should use the shapes we just created. And I'm actually going to go to the two circle Venn diagrams. Puzzle room number four, a two loop loop puzzle. And here come our crazy pieces we just created. So how cool is that? So let's see what we got here. I'm going to pick up our first uh, shape. Okay, so I know that the circle on the left is neither blue things nor this weird diamond shape face shape. Okay. Let's try the uh, purple version of the same thing. No. I have had diagrams that are completely empty before, which is, you know, kind of strange to think about. Like, you know, if we had, uh, you know, orange uh, triangles or something, one, one region was orange and one thing was triangles, we wouldn't have anything to put on the diagram at all. Okay, so I think that the circle on the right is going to be purple things, or the region on the right is going to be purple things. Yep, sure enough. And what's going to be on the left? Maybe all green things? Yeah, probably all green things with nothing in the intersection, unfortunately. That seems to be the pattern with this one more often than not. Now that I've replayed this game a few times, uh, not recently, this is the first time I've played in a long time, but I did notice that, you know, the, the number of times when you get something in the intersection is actually fairly small, and I'm not sure why exactly that is. If that's the main teaching point, you would think that... Uh, you would get, uh, more often than not, you'd get something in the, in the intersection of the two Venn diagram regions. But sometimes it's in interesting in and of itself, I guess, to realize that there are cases where there are two completely mutually exclusive categories where there is nothing in the intersection. Okay, what I want to do now, um, so we completed the puzzle, we got a little television set. I want to try a couple things just to satisfy my curiosity. So let's get rid of Gertrude. We're gonna go drop her back in the in her uh, uh, her room, Gertrude's room. We're gonna go down and see if we can edit the treasure uh, uh, treasure shape itself. I think you can, if memory serves. So we're gonna take one of the puzzle or one of the treasures into the shape editor, and lo and behold. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know what I can draw inside this tiny little. Uh, television screen, but um, I think what I can do is, how about something like yeah, we'll just draw like a vertical line in the middle of it. There we go. And so now, if we go back and just take our treasure back to the treasure room, Everything that was shaped like a television set like that would have that little vertical line. So you basically edit every category of the same same shape. Um, I also think you can edit Gertrude herself, but only her standalone appearance. You, you know, Gertrude, when she's flying, has multiple frames to her. Um, you know, like there's three or four versions of her that, are, that loop together into an animation to make it look like she's flying. But I think if we take Gertrude into the shape editor, we can actually change what she looks like um, in the... Um, stand in the uh in her resting form resting form for lack of a better word okay do, 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 do. ah yes so what what should we do to gertrude here um i don't want to mess with her completely but why don't we why don't we make her asleep so her let's close her, let's pretend her eyes closed and maybe let's give her a little wing or something so we'll kind of i don't know exactly what this is supposed to be. Let's suppose this is a, uh, I don't know, like a halo or a wing or something coming off her neck. I don't know what it is. 
And lo and behold, if we take Gertrude out and drop her anywhere, she should retain that appearance, and she does. So uh, anywhere we drop Gertrude, she'll keep that appearance. But you can see, as I pick her up and drop her, which I'm going to do again right now, you know, her flying appearance looks normal, but then when she rests, she has that new resting appearance. And, and that will persist as long as the, uh, the game continues. Well, that's a pretty good overview of Gertrude's secrets. Uh, again, there are three main types of puzzles, what are called loop puzzles, which are essentially one or two region Venn diagrams. Um, I would love to have a slightly more complicated version of this where you had like a three region Venn diagram like you sometimes get in logic as well. Um, I like that there are instructions, but you know, once you get a handle on how to play, you don't really need the instructions. It's nice to have a visual representation of the instructions and some written instructions. Um, I really especially like that the stakes are low. You get to uh, explore the point of the puzzle and what the regions refer to uh, through exploration. If you make a mistake, you're not really punished. The piece just gently slides out of the way. And uh, if you get a piece correct, it stays in the right spot. You can really uh, discover the, the pattern as you go. There's uh, some open-endedness to some of the puzzles, like the train puzzles in particular. There's some open-endedness to them uh, where the, you, you, they're not fully deterministic. There are still rules to follow. Um, I think I, what I like about the train puzzles in particular, you know, so much of logic involves sequential reasoning. You know, I'm thinking of things like doing a logic proof. A leads to B leads to C leads to D in the steps of a, of a logic proof. And uh, learning to reason one step at a time is uh, very much like doing the, the stages of a logic proof. This is still simpler than a logic proof, but it really teaches you sequential reasoning, um, which is useful for basic programming. It's useful for mathematical skills. Musical skills even are related to this. Um, and uh, of course, you know, my own discipline logic, this, I think this was useful for getting my mind thinking logically and thinking of uh, ach ach achieving a complicated goal, but in a series of, of uh, rule-based steps. Um, I like how visual the game is, honestly. I mean, this is a game that is aesthetically pleasing and nice to look at. Uh, colorful, interesting, quirky even. I mean, you know, look at these pieces. This is quirky. <laughs> you can have fun just customizing the game and making it your own. Uh, if you happen to be a kid that likes rockets and space-themed things, you can play the game with a space theme. If you like animals, you can play the game with an animal theme. And the creators of the game didn't really have to build this customizability in. It still would have been a perfectly interesting game without that customizability. But from my point of view, it makes the game much more interesting and much more colorful and fun and uh, creative for, uh, you know, not every uh, student, even though even though the uh, the point of this game is to teach, you know, logical reasoning and abstract reasoning, you know, there are artistic people that expect a fun game experience as well. And I like that this game doesn't sacrifice the creativity or the fun, even for the sake of the learning objectives. Sometimes you can get uh, educational games that err a little too, si too much on the side of fun, and it's not totally clear what the learning objective is. And sometimes you get games that make the opposite mistake, where they, they, they're so focused on the learning objective that it's almost ceased to be a game. It's become more of a uh, mathematical uh, simulation as opposed to a game. And Gertrude's Secrets, I like that it functions on both levels relatively equally. It's a very fun game on its own, even if you didn't realize that you were learning logic like I didn't when I was in first grade playing this game. I didn't realize that I was learning the, fo the foundations of logic while playing the game. It was just a fun game to play. Only years later did I make the connection and realize, oh yeah, that game that I used to love to play when I was in first grade, Gertrude's Secrets, really was teaching me the foundation of logic, and it's no accident that I became a logic teacher as a result. Um, so this game functions in, on multiple levels. It's a fun game in its own right. It's creative, it's colorful, it's interesting. There are puzzles to solve. You get treasures, you get rewards. All the things you'd expect from an interesting game it has some open-ended creativity, but it's also about teaching logical reasoning. And for a person like me that really is the intersection of artistic creativity with logical reasoning, this was the perfect game for my little budding first grade mind to teach me the foundations of logic and let me have a heck of a, of a fun time playing, uh, playing a video game uh, way back in, in, the, in the early 1980s in the Apple II in my uh, first grade classroom. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look into Gertrude's Secrets. If you haven't tried playing this game, I will put links in the descriptions below, not only to the uh, emulated version of Gertrude's Secrets on the uh, Internet Archive, 
but also to a couple of articles that I've written about Gertrude's secrets that you may enjoy reading as well. Other than that, I hope you really enjoyed this look into Gertrude's secrets, and uh, thanks for watching.